Now this is one of the most nutritious plants in the world. Yes, the stinging nettle. And it's quite a versatile little beast, so for any of you boaters who are stuck out in the middle of nowhere and your food is running short, get some of this. It's, uh, you can make tea from it. Um, it's a really good substitute for spinach. Uh, and actually, today, I'm going to show you how to make a really, really delicious stinging nettle soup. It's a good idea to find some nettles that are uh, back from the path or back from the towpath. Uh, you don't really want dogs weeing all over the nettles you're going to use, do you? The other thing, when you harvest the nettles, you'll need a pair of gloves and some scissors. Yeah, what you're looking for is the top sort of four to six stems. If you go down any further, uh, then it'll tend to be quite woody and, uh, and, and tough, and you don't really want that. So, yeah, we we'll just... <coughs> Start snipping a few of these off. And you don't want too many. A little goes a long way. Once you've harvested your nettles, you obviously need to give them an extremely good wash. And uh, obviously, using tongs is a good idea because at this stage they're still uh, they're still venomous you can still get quite a nasty sting off them they only lose the ability to sting uh, once they've been placed in in boiling liquid so we'll just give these an extremely good wash so ingredients i've got a couple of potatoes an onion now this onion is actually probably too large so i'm probably not going to use it all uh, some butter for frying these in. Uh, I've got some chicken stock here, which uh, I made a couple of days ago, which I'm going to use. You can use vegetable stock if you like. Um, and, you know, obviously stock cubes or stock gels or whatever is absolutely fine. And, of course, I've got a colander full of nettles. Uh, now, you can, if you wish, um, remove some of, the, some of the thicker stalks. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, because once it goes into hot liquid... It'll all wilt down and um, it's going to get blended up anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So I've chopped the onions and the potatoes. Now I'm just going to add them to the melted butter. And again, you can use oil, any kind of oil you like. A good stir. Pop the lid on to let them sweat and turn the heat down a bit. Give them a stir occasionally, make sure they're not sticking to the bottom. And if they do start sticking to the bottom, then just add a little bit of water. Those have been boiling away for about seven minutes now. So I'm going to add the stock. Again, give it a little stir, just to make sure there's no bit sticking to the bottom. And you cook that until the potatoes are nice and soft. At this stage I haven't really added any seasoning at all because you don't really know how salty the stock is going to be. Um, so uh, at the end I'll, I'll add some salt and pepper. Now I realised when I added the stock that actually the saucepan I was using was too small. So I've put it into, uh, into a larger pan. And now I'm going to add the nettles. Again, adding them with tongs because you will still get stung from them at this stage. Now the important thing is not to cook these for too long. Three to four minutes is absolutely plenty. If you cook them for too long, they'll completely lose their amazing colour. Okay, that's been going three or four minutes now, so I'm going to turned the heat off and I'm going to get the blending wizard. Now that my friends is a very good soup indeed. I've added a little bit of seasoning, salt and pepper, that's all it needed. Um, and it's very good, hot or cold, lovely.